up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to continue working on the Dodge Ram 3500 that we're building for our pops. And as you know, we are doing the new front end conversion on this thing. This is actually a 2012 truck with a 2020 front end on it, which is absolutely epic. But we just knocked out the most difficult part and that was actually lining up all these body gaps perfectly. Now that we got it to OEM spec, we're actually going to tear this sucker back apart. That way we can weld this front end up for good. So let's just go ahead, bring in some tools, tear apart this front end and hopefully get it all welded up. All right, so we finally tore apart this front end once again. And before we actually bring out the welder, what we did was panel bomb this apron to the body of the truck. And we also put it right back into perfect position. And the way that we did that was unscrew these self tappers and screw them right back into those holes. And we added a few self tappers as well. That way it's nice and secure and the bond is proper. But anyways, before we start welding, we want to do the exact same thing to that side. And then we'll weld this sucker to the body as well. And then we'll even bring out this cap and weld it onto the top right there. There's going to be a lot of welding. So let's just go ahead and knock out that side and then we'll bring out the welder. All right guys, so we finally got this side 100% complete. We got this apron panel bonded and welded to the body as well as this cap here and everything is just sandwiched together. It's not going anywhere. And as for this cap here, we actually traced the original cap on top of this one just to get the holes in their original spot so everything looks OEM. And we've got some nice welds everywhere. We don't even have to grind anything down. And as you can tell, we actually sprayed some etching primer in there before we threw the cap on. That way nothing rusts in there. And we're actually about to spray some on top of all these welds because we're actually gonna paint this whole entire piece the same color as the truck that way everything looks nice so anyways let's just go ahead scuff everything down real quick spray some primer and then we're going to jump on that side and do the same thing
All right, guys, so we just got done welding in the last piece of that apron. And right now we're actually finding some worms because have you guys not tried fried worms, dude? dude fried worms <laughs> is on a whole nother level. But anyways, we're actually grabbing some worms for our chickens and ducks. We're gonna give you guys a little update. Let's go over there and see if they like these things right here. So we got two of them, one big night crawler and one little shrimp right there. Let's see if the ducks or the chickens like them. Let's see what they say. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a big one. Guys, have y'all seen something like this? Oh, look at them. Dang, Dang son. Dude, them ducks right there are getting large. Dude, remember <laughs> when they used to be like on the palm of our hands and it's been only a few days, dude? That's crazy. The chickens look like they're staying the same, but oh, yeah. I guess we'll keep you guys updated. You know, the parents got this for what? For, uh, we need some eggs, man. You some need eggs. a nice little omelet or some good morning eggs or something like that. You Drink know what I mean? Raw or whatever. Drink them whatever you want to do with them. But anyways, the duck eggs are the nice big ones, man. You can do a home omelet with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Whole omelet with one what? Dude, what about an ostrich? Are you allowed to have ostrich eggs? I think so. I think you can actually buy an ostrich. Dude, should we buy ostrich? Let's buy an ostrich. Let us know if you guys think we should buy an ostrich. Where would you even get one of those suckers? I've seen one before, like somewhere around here running in a field. Well, imagine having one of those huge eggs and just having the whole thing for breakfast, dude. <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. But anyways, we just got everything finished up over there. Let's go ahead, hop back over there, finish priming everything in, and then hopefully get the whole entire front end ready for some paint. All right, so we went ahead and pulled the truck outside and we are getting really close to paint. As you can tell, we did have to remove a few things from the engine bay and we tucked everything nicely. That way we could paint behind these aprons and behind this radiator support. But as for paint, I think this would be a good spot to paint and that is because I think we're just gonna throw base coat, no clear coat, because we were looking at the factory finish here and it looks like all they have is base coat on here. So I think we'll be good. Our main concern is actually protect this metal right here because it does have some sort of weird coating on it that'll fade over time and we don't want it to get to that metal. But anyways, we went ahead and scuffed everything, wax and grease removed everything. All you gotta do is tape up a few things on this frame end and then we'll be ready to mix up some paint. Check that paint out, dude. Wow, there's a ton of it. You can't you even can't, see it right there. You can't there. even look inside of it. Dude. Um, that's, get the lid. Let's see the lid in the light. Dude. That's like the true way to see the real colors of it's it. It's still really hard with this paint because, dude, there's so much like 
black metallics in there like at night this whole entire truck just looks black you know what i mean it does and then in a, a little bit of sunlight it's all blue and it's a beautiful blue too oh yeah and like whenever we painted the hood like the edges of it like whenever it rains or something it will like make the whole hood shiny almost looks like it's completely painted the way the colors transform yeah that is pretty crazy but anyways dude this color is actually legit and we honestly asked pops today if he'd like his uh, to change the whole entire color of the truck because we're about to paint the inside of the engine bay he last said chance. Last he chance, said man. yeah last chance he said no Ooh, this is actually his favorite color and we just found out today man but anyways let's just go ahead and mix up a cup of this stuff and go ahead and spray some base coat on that All right, so here it goes, the second base coat. It is dark outside, but we got them lights on it. Dude, that it looks a, good. Dude, dude, it pops in the light, man. What's man, the what's the name of it? It almost looks like a midnight blue, but the actual name of it is actually True Blue by Chrysler. Paint code PBU if you want to paint your car or truck with this color, man. This is actually a pretty neat color because, like we said, it just transforms so easily, dude. Pretty dang decent color, I got to say, man. I'm actually kind of happy with how it's going to look probably in the end. With the two-tone, man. I can't wait to actually spray that two-tone on the fenders and on the fender flares, dude. That's going to look so the good. The silver. We haven't picked up the silver. Oh yeah, yet. because uh, we couldn't really find a paint code to that silver, so we're probably gonna have to get that sucker scanned. But anyways, man, I haven't painted in such a long time. Uh, honestly, kind of forgot the mixing ratios. <laughs> Dang. But anyways, let's just go ahead, slap this cup on the gun, and go spray the last coat. All right, guys, so we finally got the whole entire front end painted, and it actually looks pretty dang good with no clear coat. As you can tell, that paint actually changes colors in the light and in the dark. But anyways, I think it's actually dry enough to go ahead and untarp this thing and actually try to get this thing started and pull it inside because we want to go ahead and start on the most important thing, and that's our cooling system, right? Dude, our cooling system, man, I'm, I'm, I want to really want to get that intercooler yeah, in there, the, man. The intercooler is going to be a big thing because we actually got to weld some custom brackets or their original brackets. We just got to custom weld them to our frame and it kind of sits all sideways and stuff. And once we get that intercooler on, we can honestly just fly by everything. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can fly yeah. by like the radiators, the AC condensers because we got all those lines and all that good stuff so what do you say yeah i say we go ahead and pull it in there and just start working on that cooling system as much as possible because we haven't even ran this thing for more than what like 30 seconds 30 seconds all we do is start it up to pull it up to the garage and that's it dude i don't want that head gasket to blow up on us i bet this will be a tricky one on this dodge ram diesel oh man i don't even know maybe it's an easy one but we don't want to figure out i don't out, even want to i don't even want to know yeah. man <laughs> so yeah let's just go ahead and pull it inside let's do it Man, I gotta say, she looks good, dude. Looks all original, all painted, dude. This is a this is a big moment right now. Hey, man, it's like almost nothing even happened except for a purple effect. You see that purple effect? Tons yeah, of purple. I kind of do. That's pretty crazy, dude. But I'm guessing that's of course because there's no clear cut on it. But yeah. you're not gonna. This will be getting covered up. What you're gonna see for the majority of the time is this beautiful blue right here, nice and shiny, like or nice and deep blue, like the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic. I don't know which one's the darker ocean. But anyways, since we do got some lights, we could actually work into the night here. And what we're gonna do is try to mount our intercooler bracket. So let's just go ahead, I guess, bring it out, mock it up and start test fitting.
All right, so we got our intercooler and charge pipes mocked up. We got our hot and cold side on right now. As for the cold side, as you can tell, it actually mounts into the throttle body perfectly like it should. Looks like it's supposed to be there. But as for the hot side over here, we're having a little issue. It mounts up to the intercooler perfectly, but as uh, as for the turbo over here, we're almost like we're missing like six inches of piping. I'm guessing the newer turbos on the newer trucks uh, have a little bit, they're like longer or something like that. I don't know, but I think we have a solution for that. We're probably gonna use our older charge pipe right here and just do like a little cut right there and just conjoin both of them. And I think that should be fine, but we don't wanna do any type of cutting just now because we actually wanna go ahead and mock up like our radiator hoses, our radiators and all that good stuff because they all run up against each other and we just don't wanna make a wrong cut, end up having to redo something. So I, I say, let's just go ahead and grab the radiator out there, throw it in here with the new hoses and just see how it goes. All right, so it's actually the next day here, and as you can tell, last night we threw in this radiator, and everything lines up perfectly. All the hoses run proper, and they're not interfering with anything else. And pretty much what this hose is, is just an extension of the older model one. And that hose down there is actually curved differently. It goes right around that charge pipe perfectly. So we are good on that radiator. And another reason why we threw it in there is just to make sure that the intercooler clears it on the bottom end over here. And all we gotta do is just turn it a little bit to the perfect angle. And then we're gonna mark up these brackets and hopefully get it welded in for good. this out man this intercooler looks pretty dang sweet and it is nice and solid not going anywhere and instead of welding these brackets directly to the frame what we did was just drill some holes and did some nuts and bolts and I think that's gonna be the best option that way if something does happen you get the possibility of removing it but anyways to make this a functioning intercooler all we got to do is finish up our plumbing this side is pretty much already connected on that end we do got to extend it like we mentioned before but it should be really easy and once we get that knocked out we're going to keep on moving with our cooling system add our fan and our fan clutch and then by the end of this video hopefully get this sucker fired up with some coolant in it and possibly get it warmed up Alright guys, so it is time to fill this truck up with some coolant and as for the intercooler went ahead and plumbed all that up We are good there and the radiator hoses are all, all nice and tight All we got to do is probably just snap this thing off and fill it up that way as much as possible because we don't have no filler neck And we're just gonna try to work with what we got. There is a little uh, coolant uh, Vent here that way we can unscrew it and just let all the air out and possibly even pour some coolant in there Who knows we got our fan our fan clutch on we just got it zip tied so it's out of the way and uh, hopefully we can fill this thing up with coolant and get this thing warmed up. That way this fan cuts on. So let's just go ahead, pop this coolant hose off and start filling her up.
water from when it rained, it got inside the radiator grids. And it's just sucking it out. Running good? Yeah, we're running good, dude. We're real good. What's the temperature like in here? Uh, it's, it's rising slowly, but it's rising at a normal pace. Looks pretty good. It's running smooth, it's dude. Smooth, man. It's awesome. We're just checking up on a few things, just making sure everything is not rubbing or anything like that, but we're looking good so far. Dang, dude, she is running smooth, man. And we got it up to temperature. I think we got it to like 150, so we are good. And now we know that our head gasket is not blown because a bunch of white smoke probably would have been pouring out the back. But as for the purge system, we still got to put the cap on. I think you just start it and let a bunch of bubbles come out. Bubbles are still coming out right now. But I mean, all the hoses are nice and tight. There's no leaks and we are almost done with our cooling system. We just got to add a couple more coolers, the transmission cooler, as well as the power, or this is the power steering cooler right here. We'll probably replace it with a newer model one. But man, we're just happy with how far we've come with this thing. And I'm sure Pops is happy too, but that's gonna be pretty much it. Make sure your post notifications are on so you don't miss out on anything. And also, if you want an inside scoop before YouTube, definitely give us a follow on Instagram at Goon Squad. And also guys, if you wanna help support your boys, definitely be sure to visit GoonSquad.com. We just restocked on our Goon Squad camouflage t-shirts. These suckers sold out last time pretty dang quick. So if you want one, be sure to visit GoonSquad.com and copy one. But with all that being said, thank you guys for all the love and support. Be sure to drop your comments and thoughts down below. We'll catch you next time. Peace.